This is the Neobooks call for Monday, July 22, 2024. It just feels odd to me every time I say 2024. It's like we're a quarter into this new century. We just changed into the century. We just left the last millennium behind. I don't understand. Hey, Klaus. Um, we were just grinning a little bit about Biden's withdrawal over the weekend. Um, there's, I, I think this week, this Thursday's call, I'm going to make about like what happens now, where to go, what to do. There's a couple different approaches to our toward it. Jacob posed a challenge on the list that a couple of us took in different ways. Let's take it all different ways. I, I'm I'm good with, with that. So we'll have time and space to talk about that there. Um, uh, Klaus, I also noticed that you had added something to the manifesto. Jose is in there right now, adding more to it. Uh, let me put a link to the document in our chat here so that anybody can go join us in the, in the document. We are nowhere near done with the manifesto, but um, we could do worse than use this call as a co, uh, as a peer programming co-writing exercise where we just focus on what we want to say and what's missing and, you know, what's in the document and, uh, and so on and so forth. That would be a, I would be, I would be fine with that. But first I want to just check in and see what y'all are thinking. So what are y'all thinking? I'm good with that. You're good with co-writing? Uh, I find that co-writing doesn't really work too well, but I like getting information and notes and ideas and stuff and then sort of taking that aside. But I think I think that what I mean is co-writing with a really active conversation around around discussing what we mean, what's important, what to bubble up, what not to bubble up in the document. So I think it's I think it would make you happy in the sense that I mean it. Anyway, mm -hmm. I don't mean we all go quiet and try to edit together. Uh, mm -hmm. in the document, which I find hard. I find that, right. That's my point. Yeah. I find that's really difficult. Yeah, yeah. Um, Klaus, thoughts? Where are you? How are you? Good. Yeah, I mean, I, I did stand something out earlier um, um, before last meeting. My, my idea still is to have a website where um, you have dedicated neo books now uh, available. Uh, look, look at Kevin, for example, uh, where you can engage in active conversations. You know, you can actually help Kevin to explore his topics and and help him with research. Um, I mean, I have a, a range of topics. Others, um, you know, I think uh, uh, Jose has has topics, and you can engage in conversations. You know, on on your topic. And so you you make it AI supported. That was sort of you know, the, the vision that I had from the get go. So I'm using Neo Books basically as a programming tool or as a training tool for AI. What uh, what are you referring to, Klaus? Uh, for Kevin, what, what has he done? Well, Kevin and uh, and I had an exchange where um, he I, I sent out uh, an an AI. Uh, response to define the colors of the spiral dynamics in terms of what are their thought processes about climate change. And Kevin was really impressed with that. And he goes, can you apply that to racial justice? So I did. So I sent him uh, and we iterated it a couple of times. And Kevin was, wow, this is super impressive. Actually intimidating is what he was saying, you know, and uh, so now, and he's now trying to figure out what can I do with this. He said, "Well, we can advance it further, you know, because you have to, you have to engage the AI from meta level narrative down into the details of where you want to go, right? So, so Kevin is now stimulated to engage, and I set up a neo book for him, right? So he has it's it's Kevin's uh, page, um, and he can go deeper and deeper into his. Uh, topics and he can write now nuggets. You so know, when you when you say you set up a neo book for him, can you just can, is that a GPT front ending a body of documents that are particular to Kevin's situation, or is that entirely something different? Because that's what I'm picturing, and I'm not sure we mean the same thing by that. Okay, let me get you the the, the copy here. Just a second. Um, it's uh, it's called Kevin's page. And I simply, I had a few conversations with him. Um, 
before where I de deployed AI. And so I cut, I just summarized this you know, into Kevin's page. Um, no, by Kevin's page, you mean it's a it's the results of a conversation with chat GPT that you set up. Is that what you mean? Right, right. I mean, I, I used uh, the conversation that I had with Kevin you know, to engage the AI. Um, and 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 I just captured uh, these these conversations in a in a neo book, you know. So he uh, and he doesn't feel comfortable uh, apparently to to do this himself. So I'm doing it for him, but he's driving the conversation with his questions. Yeah. Okay, so, so I, I'm I'm not I'm not sure this is a neo book in the way that I mean neo books, but it's related to neo books. So I think part of what we need to do is figure out. What do we mean by this, and how does it all fit together? Well, I mean, I see it as an exploration, uh, you know, of a particular topic that you know, Kevin is working on his community uh, project. Um, there, there's there's a whole lot of moving parts. Um, what occurred to him when he saw my questions on climate change uh, and being engaged with AI uh, was, hey, can we do this with racial justice? So when you scroll down, you now I, I did just that. I, I went in, in uh, and set up uh, a conversation on, around the racial justice, um, and uh, and then he wanted to uh, uh, he advanced the conversation further um, in, into uh, can you. Can you develop, you know, an overview of what this means to the different colors of spiral dynamics? Right. So when you have a practitioner like Kevin, uh, and there are many, many others, you know, community organizers, people who are at this operational level, um, they may not be, you know, getting into spiral dynamics or into, you know, developing an AI conversation, but. Um, they get intrigued and they find it helpful you know, to to get the outcome, the, the output from from this conversation. Um, so I'm just looking at Jose and Rick to make sure you guys don't have questions right now because I want to ask ask a bit more. Um, what you're doing is completely like germane and related. It just doesn't feel like a neo book yet to me because it's not nuggets. It's basically a, a discourse. And a piece of what I think you've done and done very nicely is you've emulated what you did for your first neo book about the food system, applying spiral dynamics to it so that GPT could tell you how would you explain the important points of, of uh, uh, regenerative ag in the different colors of spiral dynamics, which made sense, which you are now doing given a body of work around social justice and Kevin's issues. I don't, I don't know what you've given the GPT as a basis, unless you, you were just asking it generally about social justice. I'm only glancing at the document you have on, on Kevin's page. I didn't have a chance, I didn't read it earlier. Um, but uh, I, don't, I don't know what the corpus is. So I have, I have a couple of questions. Um, one of them is I'm starting to think of a neo book and, and, and here we have to talk amongst ourselves to figure out what we mean by it. I'm starting to think of your book as a corpus. It's a, it's a body mm -hmm. of nuggets. It's a, it's, a, it's a group of nuggets with maybe loose boundaries, but it's a, it's a, we, we draw some kind of a circle around a corpus that would be a neo book that we believe in, uh, inside of which there might be a path through a certain nuggets that describe an essay or a book. And that, that serializes them into the form that we are used to reading, which is called a blog post or called an essay or called a book. But it's a path through those nuggets. What you're sharing with us here is the finished result, but not it's not nuggetized. There are no nuggets here. And none of these nuggets are available for easy sharing. And let's say I loved one of your uh, subsections and I wanted to include it in my Neo book. What you've just shared with us as a Google Doc is not easy to do that with. Uh, but and, and the hope is that a neo book does that. At the same time, your primary access or vehicle into neo books has been GPTs, by which I mean uh, specifically, and I don't think you used one in this case, by, but by which I mean uh, a GPT front end that is given a corpus and told you're an expert in this matter over here, answer anybody's questions coming in uh, conversationally. And I think that's a great access method for neobooks. So there's a corpus, here's the corpus, 
but but the front end is not a book is it doesn't look or smell like a book it's not serial at all but this body of nuggets is actually being uh in there's an interlocutor called gpt that knows how to access them make sense of them and answer questions based on the body of work here plus the general knowledge that chat gpt has and that is totally legit for me but it's not for me the only way that G, that G, that neobooks are manifest in the world because another way is a book another way is a presentation another way might be a podcast all of which share these fundamental building blocks and then i think jose is really interested in each of these nuggety building blocks what are they rooted in what are they built on top of how do we understand that this particular assertion in a paragraph in the middle of your essay is based on a worldview and some facts and some other kinds of stuff. Jose, again, correct me if I'm wrong here. But does that bigger, does that broader picture make sense? Well, you did say a lot of things. <laughs> I did, I did. I, I, threw in, I threw in a lot of stuff. I'm trying to, I'm trying to zoom out so that so that the yeah. description of neobooks includes what you just did and what I think I'm doing and what Jose would like to do and what Rick is doing. Okay, so first of all, this book consists of three nuggets. I just haven't broken them apart. So what I, what I have done on, on my first uh, iteration book, I mean, the, my, the story of soil, is I sort of inadvertently um, uh, came, this whole nugget thing came about, you know, uh, and when we sort of collectively started writing this first book. So he, these are, there are three distinct conversations that are, that are in here. One is the summary of Kevin's concerns, right? The... Uh, uh, the other one then is uh, an issue of uh, some of the, uh, then building local economies would be the next one, and then the next one is racial justice. So okay. I haven't paid much attention in you know uh, formalizing this or extracting nuggets out of it. I wanted to give it to, to Kevin. I mean, it's Kevin's thing; it's not mine. You know, so, but there are first of all there are three distinct nuggets in this book here. And it's, it's okay. Can I just stop there for a second? For me, each of these three nuggets you're talking about is more like a chapter that contain, from my worldview, a lot of nuggets. So I'm looking at it and I see three numbered points under worldview of an individual subscribing to white supremacy with a prompt above it. Uh, that all by itself to me is a nugget. That's a nugget. So for me, one of your three nuggets would contain probably 20 nuggets because I'm looking at this essay, which is rich with summary capsules of insights that each could stand alone. So you could reuse this worldview of an individual subscribing to white supremacy in lots of other places outside of the context of this essay. So for me, that's a great candidate for a nugget. So I, th I think we're, we, and it's okay, but we're meaning very different things by what a nugget actually is. For me, a chapter as a nugget is way too big. You're composing a bunch of ideas into a chapter, which I like because the chapter makes sense as a whole. But for me, I'm deconstructing into the, the hunks of idea that could be reused somewhere else, but have a, free, a, a freestanding holonic logic to them. That, that, are, that are nice and sort of self-contained, pithy nugget. That, so for me, the nugget is much smaller than what you're referring to as a nugget. Well, I mean, I mean each book's going to be different, right? I mean, you write different than I do, and Kevin yes, writes but, differently. But, but with your first book, I would also deconstruct it into much smaller nuggets. It's not, well, it's not this is not a I mean, that's okay. But I'm, yeah. I mean, I use this to write newsletters, and they have been very well received, right? I mean, and so this nugget has turned into a coherent story that turned into a newsletter on a topic. So here, for example, we have building local economies through farm to table systems. That is a nugget. That is a perfectly contained story. Now you can break it down into more detail if you want, which is perfectly fine, right? And then racial justice, that is, that is a high level newsletter you can develop. Here is what I think are the core issues around, around uh, racial justice. Now, sure, you can break it down and you should, Right, but that doesn't mean that you can't write an overview, you know, on how racial justice oh, fits totally. into your community planning. Absolutely, so, I, mean, no, I think that's throwing too much stuff now into the pot. No, but the goal, the goal of writing smaller nuggets is to arrive at the arguments or expositions that you're talking about exactly. That I, I'm not trying to say that what you've done is 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 bad or wrong. I'm trying to say that in order to be reusable, 
and composable and otherwise more neobooky that the breaking down of each of the, uh, the clunky thoughts is useful. I'm not even sure it's necessary. But okay, I think so Kevin, Kevin wants to write about community, right? About community systems. I mean, the developer. so racial justice is a component of how he thinks about community. Right. right? Building, uh, uh, building local economies is a component of building community. So there is a larger story about his new book which is how do how do I develop local community? Within that, uh, there are sub there are subtopics that are related to the economy, related to the food system, related to racial justice. Then he already pitched me the next question he has is about property rights. You know, yeah, cool. and so, so it's a perfect. I mean, I don't know what else a neo book could be. You have an overarching theme. And then you break it down into topics related to this overarching theme. I agree with all that. The only the only issue I'm taking here is what is a nugget and what is the size of a nugget, and how would the nuggets be represented within how we're creating these neo books so that they are more reusable. I mean, what what you're doing is each time you're starting with a new prompt to GPT and you're creating a new brand new essay. In some cases, you're covering the same ground that you covered in a previous neo book. My goal is that if you already covered the ground and you really liked the first nugget, boop, reuse that nugget and then build, you know, assemble logic by reassembling the modules of well elegantly done content. And then those modules become social documents that all of us can help improve and, and, and connect evidence to and make stronger and better over time. If what you're doing is each time printing a fresh essay, then it becomes a big collection of essays, which is a very interesting corpus of work I think that's great. And it can be queried by a GPT because the GPT doesn't care from nuggets. It just sees text and, and can interpret that. That's great. But I'm, I've got like the, the human lens on this, which is how do we share Lego-like blocks that are composable uh, by each of us to build arguments um, over and over again? And then more importantly, that the nuggets, the Legos, get better, stronger, slicker, more, more potent, have more metadata, have more grounding, uh, more foundation than before, which strengthens the arguments and makes them all better. And, so and the way I do that is to, by using, by setting up a dedicated GPT for this discussion. So every conversation I have with Kevin is in a dedicated GPT that advances itself as it goes along. That means the GPT thinks about community you know, as if as I'm asking about racial justice, it has been preset with this is about community. So if you actually read what we have been putting down here, uh, then then you'll see that the building local economy, for example, perfectly links up with racial justice because it comes from the same source. Yeah, and so I mean, there, I mean, there would be one thing. I mean, I think we're we're sort of diverting the conversation into. Uh, sort of very technical stuff here. I mean, the, the option, of course, would be to work with Kevin and say, let me help you edit this, like uh, uh, you guys did with me when I first wrote the, uh, the story of soil, right? And every few came in, they were saying, well, this seems to be disconnected and you need to put an umbrella. So, so, so that will be necessary here as well. So there's a process that makes sense. But what I was suggesting is, why don't we organize neo books so that Kevin can have a place where he's housed? You know, my ha I have a place. You no, know, um, Jose has a place where this is ha the conversation is housed, and then we can collectively suggest improvements. You know, they, I would think about uh, nuggets to be maybe a little bit more broken down, or why don't we structure newsletters around? Uh, uh, parts of those topics. So then these newsletters basically become nuggets. Anybody may have slightly different ideas about how to structure this. But I think we, what we don't have is an infrastructure to house neo books. But that's you know? exactly where I'm headed with this slightly too technical conversation. That's exactly where I'm headed. Okay, so... No, I, I'm, really, I'm trying to serve what you're saying, but you're not 
we're not connect, we're not communicating very well. No, no, because I'm a technical guy, right? I mean, I want to see where is the website, how do you structure the we, website? We have a we have a website, but the website is less interesting than the massive wiki, which has nuggets, which holds nuggets that you then assemble up into essays. But but we're not currently working that way. I'm trying to write a book about design from trust from these nuggets. So I'm I'm using massive wiki and markdown files, and I'm trying to write in the style I'm describing to you so that any one of my components rolls up into a bigger thing which we would recognize as a book, but doesn't need to because the body of nuggets that live in markdown files, we could point the GPT to as a conversation. And I'm totally good with that, but I just don't think that that's going to be the dominant way that we're going to be using and reusing this info. I, I think, Klaus, if you and I can go quiet for a little while and see if Jose or Rick want to interpret what we've been saying and say, hey, you guys, are this is a you're making a mountain out of a molehill, or I get it and this is what I would do, or anything like that, I would appreciate it. Well, I'd say you're making a molehill out of a mountain. Oh, um, nice. I I think the flips the logic. I I, I think the disconnect is huge. And it's not a small disconnect. It's, um, I think Klaus is thinking about the output, uh, the 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 format, the book, the the articles, the whatever, the GPT, and the GPT. But but he's thinking about sort of like this is what people want to see. This is how it's going to be useful to me, and and I understand that, and that makes sense. I think you're thinking about. How do we make something that makes it possibly composable? And, and therefore, how do we start thinking about building the nuggets that are then composable later? And Klaus is, is working from, oh, I will write all of this and then I can tease out nuggets. I'm not sure he wants to get to that level. And he may not even get to the level of nugget that you're talking about, right? Um, which is probably not even the negative level of nugget that I would want. That you're interested to. in. This is where you are for me on the screen right now. But yes, I totally agree. Right. <laughs> and so, so for me, I think we need to sort of have a conversation that says some of us are really interested in formulating nuggets that are uh, very composable and therefore um, need to be thought of in a way that are unique, that we don't even know what exactly how unique that is. But that composability, that nugget structure, that nugget thing, um, ultimately, if we're gonna ever be able to do this, is, is going to be something so unique and so composable that will alter the way that we are able to do the things that Klaus is talking about. On the other hand, I think most people aren't interested in that process. I'm wondering if us defining, us, those people that are interested in the nuggets, defining the nuggets in a way that is um, sim somewhat technical, but mostly functional, and then build a parser for nuggets. I'm heading the way you're saying right now. I've got some things I've got in the chat that I want to say when we've heard from Rick as well, but I, I think I'm thinking the way you're thinking as well. And so rather than making us think of nuggets, for those of us who aren't ready to think of nuggets, because the, the non-nugget natives. Yeah, the, 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 nobody's there yet. None of us are there yet because none of us really know what a nugget is yet, functionally speaking. And so, but I think we have to get there. I think that is the right thing. So that, that's what I mean by the, the mountain and the molehill is, is that it, it's a bigger thing to overcome than just there's some disconnect. I think the bigger thing is not just a linguistic disconnect or a vision disconnect, but that there is a there's actually something to be done that is to bring these two pieces together. And maybe that that process isn't about us doing it. It's about allowing people to still do what they do, like Klaus, not asking them to decompose to nuggets, 
but actually build a parser that decomposes to nuggets and and have those nuggets then be available uh, from from that parser. So anyway, I don't know if that helps or if that confuses, but that's what came to mind as you guys were talking. It helps me a ton. Uh, Rick, you're going to make sense of this whole thing for us right now, which I'm going no, to appreciate no, no, yeah. in advance a lot. <laughs> well, I wouldn't go so far as to that. Maybe maybe raising issues, really. Uh, and Jose, you were, you know, said in jest, we don't know what nuggets are. Actually, I was just looking over the definition that was provided. And for me, and we've talked about this before, I, I'm concerned about getting reduced to one construct because a construct has a certain sort of uh, certain parameters around it. And when I read it, uh, I found it more useful than what I've been hearing. Um, but when you read what? the in the document the google document where it defines um oh, you know, a brief, yeah a nugget first principles ideas based on truth yeah um and to me that the the, the the for me the limitation that i'm um um interpreting from what's being said is that to me the the idea of content is more predominant it focuses more on content than process and, um, uh, you know, even if we get a content right, we can screw up the process. And in fact, the process is far more important than the content. The content is foundational. But if you don't have the right process, we're not going to be able to move things. So I, I just, I, I'm just, I, I've expressed this concern before, and I'm glad you've got a definition in there, which was, you know, I, and even that definition, I think, needs to be elaborated on about what you mean, because people are going to take that word and interpret it in different ways. Um, and I, I think to flush it out, it needs to be with some examples. Uh, in fact, actually, I, I felt more both and when you were talking earlier um, in that, okay, there is this sort of new book piece, but then there's a community piece. And what's the interactions between the two? How does the community shape the evolving more of a living book? So it's more of an iterative process. So the, the book is, is, is sort of, I would say never book is never ending per se. It's going to be iterated on based upon people using it. So you have the inner piece and then the outer piece is, well, how are people actually using it? Because we know there's lots of books that never get read. So does it create a community or not? Um, so my plea is I think we need a few more, more other metaphors about that focus more explicitly on process. To me, a nugget focuses more on content. And I think there's an incredibly important distinction between the two. And that's more reason, that's reason why I think, you know, to me, the the nugget doesn't quite nugget it for me. Let's put it that way. Understood. Um, let me put a, I just was been have been taking notes in the chat. So uh, let me just explain what I mean by these things. Um, first, it occurs to me that um, Pete and I struggled to try to nuggetize your first document, your story of Soil Klaus. And we were like, oh man, this is going to take a ton of time to try to figure this out. But we didn't try feeding it into the maw of the Gen AI and saying, hey, here's what we think a nugget is. Please do that to this document, which could actually work. Like, like mm -hmm. that still sure. doesn't sort of solve everything. But, but I would like to see other people's works who've never... Um, heard of neo books i'd like to see those their works turned into nuggets somehow so there's there's I, th I think there's a broad need to nuggetize if i may um a lot of works out in the world uh to decom decompose them into useful small nuggets uh I'll, and and rick i'll come back to your um process not product point which i really agree with entirely uh, i just think that without some product to process around, we lose the process. We 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 wind up. No, it's both all, end. It's both end. It's all process. End. So we should ask Chat GPT, GPT to nuggetize, see if that works. I put in fortified nuggets, kind of as a funny as a funny trademark thing, because Jose and Marc Antoine Parent, who um, is in the Free Jerry's Brain Call, which is later today, he's a regular there. Marc Antoine's nuggets would probably be really tiny because Marc Antoine is is into the semantics of of assertions and arguments, and he wants to be able to trace who said what and what is it built on and what is it a, a, in a opposition to and what is it based on and all of that. He has a technical architecture that's way beyond my pay grade. I don't understand a lot of what he's into. That Jose I think addresses many of many, but not uh, by not by no means all of the things that you would like to see under nuggets. So like, so when I say fortified nuggets, what I mean is, 
hey, here's a here's a paragraph that makes sense. What what metadata do we know about it? What is it built on top of? All that kind of stuff. So there's there's a there's a bunch of interesting conversation there, which some of us will be really interested in. But if those of us who are interested in that part of it can do their work and feed it back to the nugget and make that nugget better, even though I'm using it in some other way, that's a big win. Because then the nugget is playing different roles for each of us, but it's kind of there in the middle. And Rick, you were saying earlier, the nugget thing seems to force things towards some canonical representation, and I'm, I'm using the wrong words here. I'm, my hope is that it doesn't, because I think there could be a lot of nuggets that coexist next to each other about exactly the same theme, but that disagree with each other in some interesting ways. And the comparison of two or three nuggets that seem to be similar, but aren't really, and the, the argumentation or the description between the people who believe this, but not that, is a piece of how we solve civilization in the longer run. Not that we have to convince everybody that this is the only definition of nuggets and we should collapse them all, but rather there can be mutually coexisting differences of opinion about stuff. And right now we're going on this policy, which seems to think of this definition of nugget, just make, let's use that, as the, as, as the, the way to go. But another policy would say, no, no, no. If you think of nuggets as this over here, you would do this instead. That's terrific. That's a scenario I would love to see happen. Um, then um, I, I wrote just also sort of fun uh, non-nugget natives. Like there's a bunch of people for whom nuggets are going to make no sense at all. And that's okay. Uh, there's a bunch of people who know the intricacies of how to feed Wikipedia. Wikipedia is created by some decimal fraction number of people who access Wikipedia and use it daily or weekly. Like, like the number of people who understand how changes work and what the rules are of Wikipedia and how to make a good entry and how to correct things, that's a really tiny number of the, of the people on the planet. But they've created an asset that the rest of us absolutely benefit from. I use Wikipedia multiple times a day at least. So um, in, the, in the sphere, in the nugget sphere, ooh, I just coined that one, in the, in the nuggo sphere or the nugget sphere, um, we might have a similar kind of proportion where there's some people who really give a damn about making these things extremely composable and the rest of the people just benefit from, oh, I wanna make this point, I'm just gonna use this composable nugget and drop it into my argument. And later we will all know what that means. And also your use of that nugget will increase the credibility of your argument because that nugget will be time tested. Like legislation that has been through a lot of uh, court cases or whatever, it, it's like, battle-tested nuggets will be valuable in building arguments uh, in some sense. Um, and then I don't think nuggets are inert because for me, the nuggets are living documents, which our manifesto doesn't really have that feeling quite yet. The, the, the nugget is in fact the community interactions and the, the process around thinking about these ideas, making them better, contesting them, reusing and reusing them, presenting them, all of that. So, so Rick, when you come in and say process really matters, I'm completely on board, but mm -hmm. without without the product, we I can't point to the process. No, no, so, and, no. And Klaus, if the process is always going to be, well, you just interrogate your nugget with a, with a chat, that leaves me outside of the world of trying to figure out what these ideas mean and how they relate to each other and all of that, which is the world that I'm really interested in, like, like, like how these smaller things fit next to each other or run opposite each other. Because you know, if you say the word liberty or freedom to a far right person, it means something pretty different to mm. the word liberty or freedom to a far left person. Those, those, it's the same damned word, and they have really different interpretations for what that word is right now. Okay. <laughs> a lot of stuff, Jerry. I just questioned uh, my GPT on take the neo book, the story of soil, break it into nuggets. What are the most obvious themes that could be extracted in form of a nugget? And then you, you, you see what it comes out with. I'm not sure I would have asked it that way, but um, let's see what it says. I'm following your link. And, and while you're doing, Maria, I just want to give a metaphorical reaction because to me, that it seems more focused on, for me at least, more on content than process. It's both end, obviously. Without the content, process is useless, and content without process is also useless. Um, and to me, the, it it feels like I'm I, I like it's a game of Lego sort of thing where they've got this button, you know, sort of thing, and and it feels to me sort of mechanistic and less organic. Um, and that's the reason why um, you know I, 
I, I just don't see how Nugget is incorporating process in the definitions that, that, that are described there. And I, I, I think it's worthwhile making a distinction because how do you create synergies, effective synergies between content and process? We all know what we should do, but we don't do it. I don't think we are we are all on the same page about what we should do is the thing. And that's oh, no, no, I, I agree. No, no, there's, there's a plurality. There's a plurality yeah. about what we should do. I agree with that entirely. But even if we, even with that plurality of shoulds, um, we don't do it very well. Um, and so the, the, the weak link in the change is not the content, it's the, it, it's the ability, as you were saying earlier, between conflicting ideas. Well, how do you, how do you uh, deal with those differences? And that's the place we haven't gotten to yet, which I'd, I'd be also I'd be overthinking this, you know. Then I mean, it's possible that we are. <laughs> one of the essences of doing stuff is get started. I mean, Gene Bellinger loves, you know, the worst enemy is a blank sheet of paper because you don't know where to start. And then his his solution is anywhere. You know, put a dot on the blank sheet of paper anywhere get started. I mean, we have been talking about this for a long time. You know? So why not just get started and experiment it? We're trying to solve issues so you know, are that, that's, that are unsolvable at this point. You need more, you need to have practical experience. It's just like, you know, I'm throwing out this, this neo book here, Story of Soil, and, I'm, and it comes up with some pretty logical uh, uh, nuggets that you could take out of it. Well, guess what? I can ask the next question, soil health and biodiversity. So, so I, I can ask it, so, so what about soil health and biodiversity extracted? Tell me how you would do it. Why don't I do that? And then, I mean, that's the whole idea when you have this website and you have the AI function as a component of the book, right? Now a user can engage with the book and ask such questions, right? What do I, what what does the book say about soil health and biodiversity? So you're you're so close to what I'm trying to get us to understand together, but I'm not sure you're there yet. Uh, what you, the prompt you gave ChatGPT was to summarize the major themes in your uh, neo book in your essay, which it did. Now the subheads, every bullet point in that summary would make a very interesting nugget. But the thing I meant was, let's take the original text that you and ChatGPT wrote. And let's just simply break it up. Let's just dot, draw dotted lines through it so that each of the stretches of prose that was there becomes the nugget. I wasn't interested in summarize this and tell me what themes are there. This is done very elegantly. And it could be that the themes in the, in the response that you just got and shared with us, in fact, map to segments of stretches of text in your original work. I'm interested in segments of text, like stretches of prose that get better over time. Well, take a look and see what it says. So now, uh, what, what does the book say about soil health? And you can now get to every headline, right? And then and then it just, it just gives you the nugget. Good. So that's actually, you're doing the exercise that I recommended earlier, which is let's ask ChatGPT to nug, but by nuggetize, I didn't mean summarize. I meant to break up into usable and reusable nuggets. So you're getting, you're, you're closer on it now. But that's what, well, I mean, that's what, that's what I have been suggesting all along. You know, if you you write your book, I'm I'm extracting nuggets. I actually write the book in form of newsletters about specific topics, right? That are themed together, and I'm using the same GPT to continue the conversation. But now you can take the book and you can query it. So the website that I've been suggesting is, you know, you have chapters, right? There's a Kevin, there's a Klaus, there's a Jose, right? And then there is an AI capacity that goes with the book. And I can ask the AI, what does Jose mean by saying that, right? And it gives me a response. I mean, that's the power of this AI now. Yeah. Jose, any thoughts? The mole, the, the mountain is getting bigger. Uh -huh. um, the, I, I don't think there's an argument here. There's two, we're talking about two different things. It, the, what I mean by that is, it seems to me that Klaus is not interested in building composable nuggets, meaning starting with a nugget that then can compose to create a, a narrative. 
Uh, Klaus is interested in a narrative because that's what's valuable to him. That's what is serving him and his work, and that's great. I think the vast majority of people are going to be Klauses. They're not going to be nugget natives, as you said, right? Right. Um, the Neosphere, though, is going to be made up of nugget natives or, or people who are trying to figure out the, the mechanics of nuggets and the um, and the folks that are building stuff. I think the folks that are building stuff like Klaus will build many more nuggets than the people who are building stuff from a nugget perspective. But without the nugget perspective that that people are really trying to um, structure a nugget, understand a nugget, support a nugget from a fundamental perspective, it, it will end up falling apart and turning into mush because there won't be clarity about what a nugget is. There won't be enough metadata around a nugget to make a nugget really stand on its own. And that is a fear I, I sense from you that a nugget needs to be real, needs to have a thing about it, and needs to be, in, in, I think, slightly different than you. I think a nugget needs to be much more precise than just a bunch of text um, and and a prose. It, it, so to me, it's even more than that. Mm -hmm. But cool. But I think we need to sort of say, okay, Klaus, keep doing what you're doing. And and we'll keep doing what we're doing. And we need to meet in the middle. We need to find that thing. And I think that's the process that that Rick is referring to. I think there's a two processes. There's the process of um, defining the nugget and figuring out the nugget and, and, and building a nugget process. But then there's the process of taking narrative and nuggetizing it. And then there's the process of rebuilding things with all of these nuggets, with the structured nuggets, the the Klaus built and, and other folks building nuggets and turning them into things. And I think the turning them into things is what we're excited about, but we have no idea how to get there yet. So let's not do that part. Let's not worry about how we build things with it yet. Let's worry about how we decompose things that are already there. So Klaus's work I'm, requires... I'm actually, I'm actually trying to build from the ground up with the things I'm writing. So I'm on that path myself. Which is great. But yeah. that means you should have a better understanding of the nugget. Right. So let's understand that. And I think we need to start dividing ourselves up so that we're not always trying to figure out the same thing, but saying, okay, this week, let's talk nuggets. Next week, let's talk neobooks. And that way we can start and maybe every three or four weeks, let's come together as a group. But we can focus on the work of nuggetizing, the work of what is a nugget, the work of building neobook-like material that can be nuggetized. Mm -hmm. um, and, and maybe we can figure out streams of process that are different for different people based on what they want to do. Mm -hmm. um, because I don't see Klaus wanting to play nuggets and I don't, I can't, I can't just write stuff anymore without this concept of nuggets. So for me, it's, it's kind of like, I, I really want to get to the nugget. If I could uh, maybe Please. just uh, add a little here in terms of the document, you know, the diplomacy thing is, is is really well? How do you write a neo book about neo books, so so to speak? And the other is, what are the nuggets for nuggets? Um, because the definition that's provided there, I think, you know, if you were to ask different people based upon the definition provided, as you said, you know, people with different perspectives, political views, will view things differently. And so, um, have, I I I think it needs to be more fleshed out. Um, so that people have some, a better 
understanding about because I I think we're uh, you know <laughs> that you know we just have slightly different we have different perspectives on what the nugget is and I think if we nuggetize a bit then you can say okay th this is, these are the sort of parameters around it it's not uh, a single reductionist concept so to speak it, there's you know variations on the theme of a nugget now I don't know if that makes sense to you not but it, it um, I think it's important to, and not only that, even the process we're doing here and now, how is this actually replicating the process of one writing a new book and also creating a community around it? And what can we learn from these exchanges that will help to uh, flush out, um, you know, this, I mean, you're writing a book and, and so it's going to come out and that's going to be, and, and, and uh, Klaus has done so. Um, but that, those are just two books, and the question is, well, how can how can we really clarify uh, the parameters around what new books are in such a way that other people say, hey, this this is a much better way. Well, that's the why, goal, why, why? that's the goal for our, our manifesto is to actually find some clarity there. So we're struggling with yeah, that. exactly. I well, I'm, yeah, exactly, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and when you say theme and variations, when I was talking about the juxtaposing nuggets that are similar to it, that's exactly what I meant. That's mm. I, I meant exactly that. Some people mean slightly different things. Some people mean very different things by the same freaking words. But I know exactly. Pointing that out. And, and Jose's fundamental in infrastructure would help highlight that because he would say when so-and-so means liberty is the most important thing or whatever, they're thinking about this kind of concept of liberty, which is based on this and this and this document, which comes out of this line of thinking. And these people think that liberty is based on this over here, which is really quite different. And once you understand and appreciate those differences, you can then have a more interesting conversation. Exactly. You might exactly. still end up disagreeing, but at least you have clarity. And understanding of the other without going to war over it. Bingo, bingo. <laughs> right. and, and, and an appreciation of the structures of the other. Like I've got some pretty yeah. libertarian friends now and they, they're, we're busy like debating how much should government step in and do stuff. And, you know, the arguments are built on Popper and, and whoever else, you know, all the way back. And, and their arguments, they're, they're out in the sphere. And we're busy, you know, there's an election cycle of 106 days coming up right now, where I think a little piece of this is going to poke its, 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 you know, nose above ground. Because one of the big fundamental differences between the, the MAGAs and the Dems is these worldviews around all this stuff. So it would be lovely to have some useful nuggets in the world that are useful to the election cycle. That might be a timely thing to do. Well, I'd like to add something else. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead, Go ahead guys. I'm in a conversation with Gene Ballinger and a bunch of other guys there, um, and who's also you know, doing an engaged uh, new Kumu map. And he started the map with you know, several headlines, you know, all the uh, important headlines. And um, my point was, are you designing bottom up or top down? Um, and when you go into, into this bottom up, which we did, by the way, we worked for nine months on defining a food system, you know, a community based food system. With, with Gene, you mean? With Gene. And what we ended up with was this is this model has reached a level of complexity that it is no longer communicable. You can't explain this to anybody within any reasonable context or time. Right. So then we came down to saying what defines this system is the, the systems, uh, the, the, the way that the system thinks, meaning the, the, the system's system integrity. Right? Or, or, or moral standard, right? there was a different word, can't think of it right now. But the, in other words, you have, to come, you have to come to a meta uh, uh, point before, mm -hmm. you, before you can coordinate all of these different components because exactly. in order to get them to march into one direction, they all have to have the same intentions, right? Mm -hmm. And then you yep. come in with, with trust because this is only really possible when, when everybody can trust each other, right? And so we are trusting each other's intentions and there is a meta-level intention for the system to move into a certain direction. So when you say, I'm going to write pebbles from the bottom up, from the pebble base to the top, where are you going, right? I mean, there, there is, there is uh, 
uh, a challenge here to to when, when when you when you add complexity to the model, you know, to keep it mm -hmm. going into one direction. So my my approach has been top down, right? Soil, the story of soil. You know, and I started ten thousand years ago. You know, with uh, Yuval Harari and the dawn of of everything and all of that, and then worked my way down, 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 down into here's here's how it looks at the community level. So so that's that's you now another design approach, and 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 that's you now I, I mean um, it just it just really depends on where you go and what you. There's nothing wrong, right? I mean it's it's all good. Um, but you 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 just have to put a stake in the ground you know, pretty early on. And when Gene is saying, you know, you have a white sheet of paper, you can throw that dot anywhere on this paper because it will lead you to the whole system anyways, right? Because the moment you start mapping relationships, mm -hmm. uh, th then you're connecting and then it gets more and more complex. So there is a way of building from the from the ground up, building from knucket base, provided. You accept that you will encounter complexity, and that complexity is part of design, right? Mm -hmm. And yeah, if I can, go ahead, Rick. Yeah, just just to to, to feed off of what you're just saying. I mean, we, we, to me, the issue is 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 the trappings of reductionism, whatever it is, whether it's one construct, one virtue, trust, or whatever. You have to put a, you know, I agree. You have to put a a dot on the on on the sheet of paper, but there are multiple dots. And once we start having multiple dots, then you start getting into complexity. And so there is that real tension between, um, you know, reductionism and simplifying things so people get it. And the other hand, well, it's not the full picture, et cetera. So, you know, and, and when you were talking up, top down, up down, uh, bottom up, top down, I mean, I was immediately thinking, well, it's ecological, you know, that's dichotomous frameworks. And so we always sort of try to, you know, parcel things down so that we can have a, a way of talking about things that um, lose a lot of what's important, what needs to be said. But I want to put a little spanner in the works here because one okay. thing I've been, <laughs> what I've been doing recently, um, is, as you know, I've been writing songs. I wrote a song this morning on Camila Harris. And, um, Kam it's and, Kam and Kamala. Uh, Kamala, Kamala it's, Harris. No, it's, yes. not, it's not Kamala, it's Kamala. Kamala. Don't, don't do Kamala, don't do Kamala. It's Kamala. Kamala. Thank yeah. you for, 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 yeah. for, for, for a dyslexic, you, you know, you always have to practice these words. Yep. 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 Kama, Kama la. Kama. Kamala. Yep. Kamala. Thank you. Thank you for that correction. I, I won't yep. make that. I'll see if I can avoid making that mistake again. Thank you. Sweet. Um, so anyway, but actually I was just thinking about the, about, well, what about writing a song about a nugget? What about writing a song about neo books? Because the actual process of writing a song involves a lot of creativity. It's distilling things into a, into a way that tries to capture the essence of it. And uh, I, I'm, I'm, I'm willing to put a stab into what a neo book is, but I, I, I need a little time over because I can't, you know, um, I don't feel like I've got a good grasp of what's inside Jerry's brain and your brain, Klaus. Sure. And, See, and, that's, and, that's too complex and, to communicate. Uh, I know, exactly, exactly. How do we reduce Jerry? I mean, good grief. <laughs> I think it involves a hot fire and some some animal fats. Um, well, I'll, put, I'll put the song in for you just to give you a little inspiration. So if you want to add a little, you know, uh, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't call a song a nugget, but it's a way of attracting attention. Okay, no. so the things that you and Klaus just said are a whole other layer that we haven't talked about up until now in this conversation, but we've mentioned it before, which is, I'll, I'll call it storytelling. And I think of songwriting as a form of storytelling uh, and it's art. It doesn't need to have logic. It doesn't, it, it is, yeah, exactly. so it, it is referencing other songs and history mm. and belief systems because songs are not value neutral. They're not just invented out of whole cloth. Right. Right. So so when uh, Bob Dylan talks about Fred Trump as the man, as the, the shitty landlord, die, uh, that that there's a fact right there. Right. It's a, it's about yeah. Trump, Trump being sued by the U.S. government. Uh, that's in the song. But storytelling is immensely important, maybe more important than all the other crap we've been talking about here, which is how do we think about the, the logic and the basis and the this and how does it thread together and how does it get reused? Good. OK. Um, 
people are going to hang their hat and follow along with the story that's that suits them best. And, exactly. and there's, there's a thought in my brain that says emotions and uh, membership trump logic, trump reason most of the time. Exactly. And stories are the vessel. Stories are the vessel. So but the, uh... I'm, my hope is that the Neo Books Nugget infrastructure allows for more powerful storytelling and more visual storytelling and more audio story, whatever else it might be. I want that to be a piece of this as well. And stories are way more ambiguous and way more funny and like they're squishy. Mm -hmm. If you listen to Jordan Peterson trying to make logic, I'm like, oh my God, <laughs> he is just, he is just gluing shit together left, right, and center. And oh. Picking from stories he likes and yeah, exactly. facts it's that we very sort of persuasive. Agree, and facts that we sort of agree on and some that we don't. And he's like jamming them together into a like stew that a lot of people really like. And I am just not liking his stew at all. Yeah, it's called the blue pill, the matrix. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So anyway, there's, there's there's all this stuff is going on live, you know, live fire right now. But in terms of influence, I think you know if you think of actually, I don't know if you watched the documentary 1971 on Netflix. Have you watched that one? If you haven't, you may want to because uh, it's a documentary about um, all the protest songs that were written in that year, and it's fascinating to go back and just see how much protest i there was a song which you all know called um don't get fooled again by the who that inspired me to write a song don't get conned again mm -hmm. and I, I and i think you know s songs that, that i'm interested in are ones that challenge people you know uh in this you know the, it, more in the poetic license of bob dylan and whatever uh and i i think it's a way of engaging people to you know a, a, Hopefully they don't become too reactive and there may be something in it where they pick up a line or something and they think, oh, that means that's, that's making me think differently. So, you know, how can, how can we sit? Well, this, I'll put this into the mix, actually, because I'm interested in how to use songs as a way to engage people into, uh, into deeper learning processes. The documentary, I think, is called 1971, The Year That Music Changed Everything. That's yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Thank you. It's it's a great it's a it's it's a great I, walk down memory lane. And I don't I don't know about it, so uh, thank you for that. But it was it was it, it'll it'll stimulate you because I mean if you think about where are the protest songs of today? Right, right. Well, uh, they're actually who, out who, there. Well, they're not well popularized in the same way they were in the seventies. Yeah. I mean, can you give me the top? 10 protest call, call, uh, songs that, uh, I mean, there are, there are some, but it's not to the level of, you know, um, um, well, if you, I'll, I'll tell you what, I'll, I'll go and look that up on. So have you AI. seen, have you seen Childish Gambino's This Is America? That's no. A, Donald Glover is Childish Gambino. It's one of his characters. So tell me, I'm going to put the video in our chat. Tell me that this Fantastic. is not. Tell me if this is not a fabulous well, modern, modern so protest song. Doing something to like stand out. Yeah, tell me that this is not a fabulous modern protest song. It's it's okay. incredible. Well, maybe it's an age phenomenon, but I, I, it's not really it's not the reaching kids these days. Well, I, I still, I'd still like to see. Uh, I'm gonna, I'll, 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 I'll look into it to see. I'll, I'll do a search on perplexity AI. And see what it says about what are the top 20 protest songs in the last year? That's a great question. Yes. I think that's a great query to ask. Um, I'm finding the 1971 uh, thing on, on uh, huh. It, it's a Netflix documentary? Oh, no. Uh, it's, no Apple, it, it's, it's Apple it, TV. Oh, it's Apple TV. Okay. It's Apple Got TV. It. Yes. Okay. It's not Netflix. Right. Apple TV. So I have to go there and find it. Got it. Cool. Uh, um, pink. Pink, pink. And then protest songs. 
I'm sorry, I, I, I'm, I'm doing another search on something else at the moment. I have to complete it first. I think, I think each of us is now distracted by the too many things we've been saying on this call already. <laughs> we're, we are all like, mm, 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 mm. <laughs> um, cool. Uh, my it's on YouTube as well. Oh, good. The full documentary is? I, I just found the trailer. I just found a two and a half minute uh, trailer, but not the full doc. I think you have to go to Apple TV to watch the doc, but I'm not sure. Yeah. So could I suggest that we actually look at the documents that we wrote to see if we could tease Which, out stuff we like and don't like as uh, far you, as the manifesto? Do you mean the manifesto? Uh, the, yeah. This up? Sure, sure. Let's take a look at the manifesto. The, the thing that you suggested? Yeah. Wanna, do you want to screen share it or shall I? Go ahead. All right. Let me go find it. Think. Come back to Zoom. Share. Screen to think. Think. This guy. I don't know how this F got up there. We don't need that one. Uh, so this is the doc we've got so far. Could you enlarge it? I'm looking at it on screen. Pardon? Could you enlarge it or full, uh, do a full screen? Yes, I can. Uh, it's just a. Let me do this and then a little bit of this. Oops, it's not enlarging with the pinch and zoom. Is that still too small? No, this helps. It okay. helps. Um, and I put the link to this at the in the chat at the top of the call. That was the first link I put in our chat. So if you scroll to the top, you'll find the the Google Docs file that that I'm, that we're in right now. Um, and so this this is I started, and then uh, Klaus added this here. Uh, I was going to go back into some of the other stuff. Uh, I, I just added some links to things that I did before, which are nuggets, basically. So so for example, um, this is a link to a YouTube video I posted some years ago, I don't know, seven years ago, where I basically sit in a swing chair and I say, hey, creators face the dilemma that on the one hand, they want their ideas to spread to as many people who could usefully use them or enjoy them. On the other hand, they want to make a living from their ideas. And these things are in conflict. So we wrap the ideas with digital rights management and intellectual property law and commercial models. And then we put them in the world and hope people will buy them, which defeats the author's goal of touching everybody, right? And people who are publishing open source and trying to get rewarded some other way are defeating that dilemma. They're working their way around it. So, so the creator's dilemma is, in this case, a video. It should probably be a, its own little nugget page on my... I, I was just thinking during this call, okay, I need to turn that into a page on my uh, massive wiki, on the OGM wiki, so that there's a node for it. And that node would include a link to the video, but then would include a prose description of the dilemma, right? And so, so this argument includes sub-arguments because, because here, that whole thing that I just said is just a bullet point with a link to the video. And then I, I have another node. This, this is actually a link to my brain where I was thinking about one of the aspects of the manifesto that doesn't necessarily need to be written fully into the manifesto, but as a reference is, hey, books are really limiting. So what are the, wh how are books limiting? And one of the ways books are limiting is this thing I call the unwritten laws of books. Like we don't reuse chapters in books. That's an unwritten law of books that, you know, uh, all the material in a book needs to be original uh, from the author, except for maybe quotes, uh, which need to be cited properly. Those are all unwritten laws about books. And part of what NeoBooks wants to try to do is break some of those laws or, and take advantage of the constraints to rethink them productively. Anyway, I'll, st I'll, I'll stop talking. And then, uh, Jose, do you want to walk us through or talk us through um, your version of the manifesto? Well, it, I was trying to do something, uh, again, not looking back, but looking forward um, and trying to uh, describe this new idea, this new vision of what a neo book is. Yep. Um, and so trying to be energizing about it um, and and trying to start building some of the 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 grounding for what a nugget is um, in my mind um, and and what it is that we're trying to do as far as as how these um, yeah, exactly grounded in first principles 
Right. Um, which is the first sentence that strays from everything I would agree with. Like, like I love that you would be doing that work, but my nuggets, I probably wouldn't do that work on my nuggets, but I would love if they were added to my, in, in the same sense of I use the brain and I don't add metadata. I don't add, you know, uh, link types, but I, it's not because I hate metadata. It's because that's not the part of the work that I'm focused on, but it would be super interesting if, as I wrote, there was an AI that had your brain in it and your concepts of how do you, how do you tag out the foundations that would then do this tagging for me and include it in the metadata of any nugget that I wrote. I would like that. That would be awesome. Mm -hmm. So it's not that I disagree with this. It's that the nugget being grounded in first principles is not a lead thing for me. It's a nice to have after the fact, but it's, I think, I think it's pretty essential for your vision. I, I don't see how it, yeah, I don't see how it becomes as as beneficial as it could be if it's not grounded in something. If gotcha. it's just I have an idea and you have an idea and I throw out my idea, you throw it. That's where we're at today. So, so how do we how do we evaluate nuggets or look at nuggets in some way that is um, validatable, if you will, mm -hmm. right? Like, what's your background on that? Oh, I don't have anything to support that. Okay, right. well. <laughs> All right. So you're just throwing shit out. Okay. Well, I can throw shit out too. So, so I think, I think I agree with you more than I realize um, because that that's the conversation I'd like to get to very much. Yeah. I see, I see that uh, Jose, what, what you're saying, connecting with what Cherry is not yet saying um, that uh, it's, it's like throwing this proverbial dot onto a blank sheet of paper, right? Um, you need to have, a meta level thought, right? A, a what you understand as truism that you are expressing in this nugget. So you're making statements basically, mm -hmm. um, but you know these are true, uh, but and you can prove it. So uh, if questions arise, you can then break the nugget down into components. Uh, so, for example, I can say soil health is dominating. Uh, the climate change movement, and without fixing the soil, you can't fix climate change, right? I mean, I can uh, say that, and then I can write books about uh, how this is true and, and yep. why it's true, right? And talk about the rain cycles and all this and the other stuff. And and so so I think, Jerry, that's missing in your uh, idea of starting with a nugget is to add on, you know, that you're really approaching a much larger topic uh, in nugget form, uh, which you are then able to elaborate on and turn that into a neo book. I'm just working the other way around, I guess, but we are we all doing, I mean, that this would have the same outcome. Mm -hmm. I think we're aiming roughly in the same direction. We're just coming at it in really different means, partly because of our fascinations and our worries and our our compulsions, our, our individual and right. different compulsions. Right. But, but, I, views, yeah. but, I, but I think that all of the above are actually quite complementary. Mm -hmm. and, and if we were 10 years deeper into this, would line up really well. We just don't have the 10 years to, to, to do that. We have to, we have to do something pragmatic now that demonstrates these different things. By the way, it would be extremely useful if the manifesto were linked to demonstrations of all the things that we say in the manifesto. Meaning, if we could make an assertion in the manifesto about this is important or whatever, that backs up with even a, a video or an essay or, or whatever else about that. See, I could work with Kevin, you know, and have Kevin make uh, a, a nugget statement that uh, the economy needs to decentralize we need to break that. We need to break up the oligarchies, which uh, are dominating the entire economy to the detriment of community level people and businesses. Um, so, so you know, along those lines, mm -hmm. you can break that down into uh, property rights and food systems and what have you, right? I'm not sure that's a nugget statement. What well, you just course. said, yeah, I I think that's actually a meta statement. I think that's made up. That's, that's made up, made of, many up nuggets. of many, many, many nuggets. Bingo. And and I think that that's what I was saying earlier, Klaus. You're thinking very high level. Here's the story I need to tell. And yeah. that's a really important story to tell. So, but, so yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Okay. 
I, I apologize. I was, I was interrupting you, Jose. Uh, go ahead until you're done. That's all right. Um, so let me, uh, Klaus, by reading your pieces and thinking about your arguments and going to draw down food in other places, I was busy in my brain trying to compose some of the succinct statements of your arguments. So here are some of the food systems, many costs and dangers. This is all under the food system. Here's the food system, blah, blah, blah. Uh, but one of the thoughts I already had in my brain, a, th a thought I put in in 2011, July of 2011, is that the, there's, in the U.S. there's a hidden war on small farms. If you're a small farmer, yeah, you are, exactly. you are, you are, every, everything is against you. Yeah. Um, John, John Deere uh, leases you your truck and sells you back the data they harvest from your farm. Seriously? That's, that, should be, that should be a crime. Um, if you're farming wild black, it's worse. There's a, a term chickenization. Have you heard of chickenization? So um, chickenization comes from, uh, here's the Wikipedia term, here's the meat racket. Uh, there's a couple of different places that talk about the chicken industry. Under chickenization, farmers are squeezed of all profits, bear all the risk, have no alternatives, and have no control over the outcome. That's what's happening to small, uh, to small farms. And that's, these are industrial chicken oper operations, not even, not even small farms, because the big industrial chicken, chicken uh, processors uh, outsource up everything. They, they outsource a lot of the chicken uh, making, raising. They raising exactly. So, so these aren't even small farms. Some of these are pretty big operations that just make zero money because the operators, the owners of the brands, and all that stole everything. Uh, so, this is this is a nugget that's composed of a variety of other nuggets, right? There's a hidden war on, on small farms. I will I will declare it as a nugget. It's just that it's a meta nugget, the way Jose just declared, because. Under it are a variety of things like chick under chickenization. And then um, there's a meta thought also that comes in separately, but is completely related that businesses, it's under critiques of capitalism, that businesses have been successfully shifting risk to others, right? So the idea of zero, um, what's it called? Zero scheduling, zero, I'm forgetting what it's called. Part-time work is replacing full-time. It's in here somewhere. Uh, basically a lot of work, uh, many companies, uh, have made workers contractors who never get 30 hours. Because if you get more than 30 hours, we have to pay you benefits. So so these people are, are basically at-will employees, meaning, I don't mean at-will, um, they're on-call employees. They're constantly on-call. They don't, never know what their schedule is going to be the next week, but they never get more than 30 hours a week because the company doesn't want to pay benefits. But the fact that they always have to be on-call means they can't have a second job or a third job because they can't predict their schedule for any of the jobs and they'll get fired if they don't show up. So the, these dilemmas all exist in the world. They're all capitalism going amok. And each of these for me is a nugget that might or might not be included in someone's stream of thought, right? So I would love for there to be an essay connected to this thought right here, which would then be a starting point for a community to talk about how do we make this stronger? How do we connect more evidence under it? You know, part-time work, is it replacing full-time? Great. Um, what is the logic? These are all, this is a New York Times article. Uh, this is a, a study from somewhere. This is a Vox article. Uh, this, this is here. It's called on-call worker scheduling. I finally, finally found it. So on-call shifts, zero-hour contracts. These are the terms. Uh, this is the this is the Z I was looking for earlier. Um, these are the things where you're not guaranteed any time. Zero-hour contracts mean you need to be on call, but we don't think you, there might be a week where you get no hours, and that's just tough. That that's how we employ people. Anyway, sorry for the long rant on this, but I'm trying to say that in my brain, a really, really, really fun part of using my brain is this nuggetization of the assertions of what's screwed up, you know, here does, you know, does ethical capitalism pencil out? And I need to connect this to critiques of capitalism. So here's critiques of capitalism. And now I've got it under the, the major thought of critiques of capitalism, which is a lot. There's a lot of people here who've critiqued capitalism over the years, but we still live within the system. I can just uh, go off in a slightly different direction again. Please. Uh, as you were talking, uh, it reminded me of a session I went to with Jim Ruff, who spoke about uh, wise democracy. And <clears throat> he makes a distinction. I put the links in there. And I, I, I just wanted to, you know, uh, when I mentioned the song, uh, the, the idea of songs was how do we embrace creativity and artistic endeavors into this process? And in his talk, he, he made a distinction between choice-making and choice 
creating. And choice creating requires a, a safe environment of trust where people can sort of uh, go into the sandpit and not take themselves so seriously and, and come together and try and do choice creating, which is, you know, when you were talking earlier about the two opposing nuggets with different, you know, political worldviews, well, it, it's sort of, you know, putting the nuggets outside of the sandpit, going into the sandpit and saying, okay, well, what, what could we do together? Where, where, where is the middle ground between us? And just to build on Jose's point about a meta perspective, I, I put a definition of meta equity meta governance in. Um, and I don't know where this fits in to it. it. This is sort of going meta to the idea of what neo books are about. Um, but I just, you know, I was triggered by the conversation the last 20 minutes to add these pieces. But the piece that I want to really emphasize is can we create a, a you know, a, a, a playgrounds where people can be more creative, come together, have more generative dialogues about dealing with complexity and increase people's sophistication of it, uh, of their understanding it, rather than what we are doing, which is we're going down the... Uh, you know, the, the reductionist downward spiral into uh, oversimplification, which just divides us even more. So, uh, Rick, I think you said you'd put a link somewhere, but I don't see the link you referred to, to when you started oh, talking I, about Jim Roth. Uh, yeah, I, 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 it's below. Oh, I put it into the document itself, actually. I just, oh, I think sorry. It, so you put it into the document, not the Yeah, I just put it there. I just thought, I, I just, you know, you can take it out if you want. I, I would just thought it'd be better to go there. It's more for idea generation. Um, you know, and so anyway, that's just some thoughts. Okay, thanks. Thank you. And, and I don't, and, and, Rick, and Rick, I don't know what equity meta governance has to do with with a, a neo books manifesto. To be frank, well, it, it builds on what Jose was talking about. That if, if if well, expand out from it. What's the ultimate purpose of meta books? Uh, to, to, to the make, make society better is great, but uh, your language for for explaining these things is I find really like I can't get through it. Like ultimate meta process for humanity, the alt UMH. Nobody says UMH, uh, and massive transformational purpose comes out of the EXO group. I've been trained up in that. Yeah, but but I don't see how this helps. Um, I sorry, uh, the equity meta governance uh, uh, tropes that that you use. Um, seldom drag me closer to the objectives that I think you and I actually completely share. Well, I mean, you can break it down and simplify it. Just, you know, co-create fair rules, fair plays, fair games, fair opportunities, fair rewards for all for the benefit of all on a healthy, actually I will put in regenerating planet but, rather than a healthy planet. But that becomes a manifesto for fixing the world, which NeoBooks hiddenly secretly is, but I don't think that's our lead. I think we say something broadly like, you know, if if we had lively shared documents where we, and we could do better idea contests, the world would be better off. And we stop there with the abstractions because otherwise, um, more equitable work is is a, a, a motherhood statement. It's like everybody thinks motherhood is good. It doesn't differentiate us from other uh, initiatives, and it doesn't add nuance to what a neo book is trying to do in the world. I think. Now, it might be an example of equitable discourse. That's interesting. Yeah. Uh, um, you know, we obviously, uh, you know, w w we have two co conflicting nuggets here. Um, and as, I would invite you to be. Yeah, exactly. And I would invite you to be more curious of the other side rather than asserting your side. I've tried to read through your posts. You send a lot of. Well, no, 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 no. I'm, no, no, no. Don't yeah. overgeneralize. Just okay, on this sorry. particular point here. Okay. Because you've said that to me several times before, mm -hmm. and I would again encourage you to try and understand the other before imposing your views. Um, thank you. And I'm open to Klaus or Jose like, helping me see what I'm missing. So if they wish. Um, uh, but I mean, I think this I've, is I've... exactly what we need to do. We need to have conflicts of worldview. I think this is incredibly helpful. Good, me too. Because if we if we can't do it amongst ourselves, there's no way in hell that you're going to be able to enable other people to do it. That's exactly right. Uh, Jose, you were saying? I 
zoned out. Oh, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> oh, too much stimulation. I, I'm getting there too. <laughs> I have to run a few minutes for, for another meeting, guys. I, mean, I think the moment is appropriate for us to fold this call. Yeah, that that sounds okay. good. But thank you, very, thank you very much. I thought it was really fruitful. And uh, we've got something rolling here. So think, think about the website, Jerry. The, the neobooks.org exi uh, or .com exists. Uh, we just need to figure out how it fits together with this, but it exists. And uh, I'm happy to work with you to make access to your chat bots uh, visible on that website and you can go point to the website. Okay. Let's do All that. Right. that. That's a very simple and thing. And the pages. Yeah. That's a very uh, simple thing we can do right now. Cool. Thanks, gentlemen. All right. Okay. Mm -hmm. Ciao. Bye now.